Welcome to the Harker Heights Virtual Town Hall presentation of residential parking ordinances for the month of July. Today we're going to be talking about uh, these ordinances and in particular heavy vehicle parking, parking on residential lawns, and future actions. First, let's talk a little bit about why we're here today. My name is Joseph Molise, Director of Planning and Development for the City of Harker Heights. Working with me are Ms. Courtney Paris, the Senior Planner, and Mr. Jerry Bark, the Interim Assistant City Manager. You can contact all of us through the information on the screen now, or go to the City of Harker Heights website, www.harkerheights.gov, our Facebook site at Harker Heights TX, or Twitter at Harker Heights TX. What are we going to be talking about today? Well, mostly the City Council has identified a need to prohibit heavy vehicle parking and parking on lawns and residential areas. We've gotten multiple complaints regarding these issues, and so the City Council has tasked us with looking at that. So this presentation is a follow-up to a public forum that was held on July 15th, 2019, in which we met with, the, with citizens over at the Activity Center to discuss the, the potential of banning these types of parking. Since that time, staff has written draft ordinances to address these issues, and we're going to go over those today. What are we asking of you? First, we'd like you to watch this presentation in its entirety. Then we would like you to get with us and provide questions, concerns, or comments about the proposed ordinances uh, through this platform or our city website, or you can contact Jerry Bark directly. Next, we'd like you to spread the word. Ask your friends, family, and neighbors in Harker Heights to participate in this process. The more people that participate, the better understanding we'll have. And finally, this presentation will be available online for viewing and comment until August 10th, 2020. So please get those comments to us before that deadline. What should you expect from us? First, we're gonna listen, document, and analyze your comments and concerns. Then we're going to reply to your comments if you request that we follow up with you. And finally, we're going to take your comments and our analysis back to the City Council to produce the final versions of the ordinances they requested. Now let's talk about the heavy vehicle parking ordinance. In our current codes, heavy vehicle parking uh, requirements are addressed in the transportation portion of the code, and it defines heavy vehicles as large vehicles that are 18 feet or longer, seven feet or wider, nine feet or taller, or 10,000 pounds or heavier. So in the photos on the slide, you can see examples of potential heavy vehicles like the ambulance and the limousine. So heavy vehicles should not regularly be parked in the street or in residentially zoned properties, except recreation vehicles. So within our current ordinances, recreation vehicles are not considered a heavy vehicle. In our current ordinances, you can park a heavy vehicle in a residentially zoned property if you obtain a permit. And this permit requires certain conditions be met before it's issued. So why do we have a need to regulate heavy vehicles? As I mentioned before, we've received numerous complaints about the noise, about how it makes their neighborhood look, and about general commercial activity occurring in residential areas. There are also safety concerns with these heavy vehicles when they're parked on the street or in driveways and they block lines of sight for oncoming cars or cars trying to leave their driveway. And finally, and more importantly, most residential streets and driveways are not designed for repetitive use by heavy vehicles. These heavy vehicles increase the wear and tear on the streets and require maintenance sooner and more often than the streets were designed to handle. Let's look at what's going on around us. So our neighbors all have regulations regarding heavy vehicles. The city of Clean does not allow heavy vehicles in residential areas or within 600 feet of residential areas. The city of Nolanville does not allow heavy vehicles to be parked in the street in residential areas, but they can be parked on the driveway. The cities of Belton, Temple, and Gatesville have similar requirements in which they do not allow heavy vehicles to be parked in the street but you can park them behind the front setback. So typically that's behind the front of your house, which a lot of times you'll find either in a side driveway or behind their fence in their backyard. So we as city staff have put together a draft ordinance to help alleviate the situation with heavy vehicles. As the ordinance stands now, 
Section 72.21 of parking of certain heavy vehicles explains where you can park heavy vehicles and in what, uh, what zoning districts and what we would require to get a permit. Staff has drafted an ordinance to regulate heavy vehicles in which we take and modify the original ordinance in the code. So looking at section 72.21, what we would do or recommend doing is striking the specifics regarding which residential properties cannot allow heavy vehicles and getting rid of the opportunity to provide a permit. And so uh, section 72.23 would be deleted in its entirety. Making these changes to the code would eliminate the possibility of parking heavy vehicles in a residential area, even with a permit, because it would ban the ability to get a permit. Now let's talk about parking on residential lawns. This is another issue that we see uh, currently in the code. There are vehicle requirements for parking, in particular in commercial areas, all weather parking surfaces are required. So all commercial properties are required to have an asphalt or concrete parking space for their customers and for their employees. And parking on landscaped areas is prohibited. So restaurants or any other commercial venture uh, are not allowed to park on the grassy areas of their property. However, in residential areas, while all weather parking surfaces are required, parking on landscaped areas is not currently prohibited. So again, why are we looking at this ordinance? As you can see from the photos, we do have a problem with people parking trailers and vehicles in their yards. And the reason it's a problem is because we as city staff and the city council have received numerous complaints that, car, that cars parked on the grass create a negative appearance for the neighborhood, they reduce property values, and they make it incredibly difficult to sell homes. Also, there are safety concerns, including blocked sight lines, similar for heavy vehicles, impeding access by first responders, leaking chemicals into the ground, and potentially starting grass fires during dry seasons. So in these photos, you can see in particular the bottom photo, there's a car parked in front of the front door. So it'd be difficult for emergency responders to respond to an accident or incident inside that house. Again, we'll look at what our neighbors are doing as far as their regulations are concerned. Colleen and Nolanville do not allow vehicles to be parked on lawns. Belton doesn't allow them to be parked on lawns, but they will allow gravel parking for some residential zonings, in particular their more rural zonings. Temple doesn't allow vehicle parking in the grass unless it's screened. So unless you can see it from the street, um, it, wouldn't be, it would be allowed as long as it's not visible from the street. And finally, the city of Georgetown doesn't allow it, but they do have grandfathered properties in which they do allow vehicles to be parked in lawns. So again, staff's put together an ordinance to uh, limit vehicle parking in landscaped areas. And essentially what we would do is create another section of the code, 155.069, that says residential parking in landscaped areas is prohibited. In particular, it shall be an offense for a person to park a vehicle, trailer, or recreational vehicle on a landscaped area in a residential zoning district. What this means is that parking in your yard would be prohibited, unless, of course, there was a mechanical failure like a broken down vehicle or a flat tire where it'd be unsafe to move that vehicle. And then we would ask that disabled vehicles be moved as soon as safely possible. Next, we would require all weather parking in residential zoning districts, uh, and those parking uh, sections would require a building permit. All weather is typically defined as concrete or asphalt in our code of ordinances. So if you decide to add additional parking spaces, you'll need to get a permit and use those materials. And finally, the building official may require a drainage study to ensure the protection of your neighbors from stormwater runoff. As you may be aware, the more uh, pervious, impervious cover you add to your property, such as a structure or a concrete work, that increases the amount of runoff that will leave your property. And we have a responsibility to make sure that neighboring properties aren't negatively impacted by that potential runoff. There are also regulations regarding how much of your yard that you can cover. As I mentioned before, there is a potential issue with, with runoff. And so staff has crafted this ordinance to limit the amount of paving that can occur on a property. In the front yard, no more than 50% of the existing front yard can be paved over. This does include the driveway if it's already there. 
On side yards, the limit is also 50%. And again, that includes the existing driveway. If you've got a side entry garage or a garage in the rear of the property. And finally, backyards are only allowed to be paved up to 25% of the area. Again, these limits are there to minimize the impacts to drainage and to help with the aesthetics because very few people would want their neighbors to have a completely paved over yard. Next, we would, we would talk about grandfathering, which in, in the planning world is called existing non-conforming. So in this case, existing non-conforming residences as of the date of the adoption of this ordinance shall provide the minimal all-weather off-street parking areas as required. What this means is that all properties will have to comply with this ordinance. So if you're grandfathered, you would still have to come into compliance. Um, to be considered grandfathered, we would ask that you report your address to the city, to the city department so that we can uh, keep track of that and ensure that you eventually come into compliance. Now, what we're not including in this ordinance is driveways. If you currently have a gravel or dirt driveway, you would not be required to bring that up to code just the parking spaces. Additionally, grandfathered properties would have more options than what the classical definition of all weather surfaces would be. In particular, they'd be allowed to use decomposed granite, gravel, pavers, or other types of materials approved by the building official in addition to the all weather materials. However, if you're a grandfathered property and you wish to construct more than three parking spaces on your property, uh, the additional spaces will have to come up to the all-weather code. You can't, uh, for example, make five gravel parking spaces. Next, uh, this section does not apply to certain circumstances, the first being vehicles owned or leased by the city. Also, vehicles otherwise lawfully parked or left standing at a construction site or by public utility companies are exempt from this ordinance. And finally, agricultural machinery and implements are also exempt. However, boats, trailers, RVs, et cetera, are not exempt from this ordinance and must be parked on a parking surface. Now let's talk about what happens after this point. So what happens next? This presentation will be available for viewing and comment until August 10th, 2020. After that, we will compile all of the input from this presentation and from other sources into a final draft uh, set of ordinances for each of those issues. Then the City Council will review and discuss the final drafts in a workshop scheduled for August 18th, 2020, beginning at 3 p.m. Finally, based on input from the workshop, the City Council will attempt to adopt the ordinances in a public meeting on August 25th, 2020, beginning at 5 p.m. How will these ordinances work? The enforcement of the ordinances will uh, happen in a staged manner. So the ordinances will go into effect immediately upon adoption. However, we will not fully enforce them for a year. And that way that allows for preparation and educational outreach to make sure that everybody knows what the ordinance say and what the requirements are. Uh, to that end, the city will advertise the new ordinances via social media, press releases, and we'll also put flyers in your water bills explaining what's happening and when you'd be required to come into compliance. And finally, the city will actively engage with non-compliant property owners to get them into compliance. What that means is, is as code enforcement or other city personnel drive throughout the city, if they notice properties that don't meet the requirements of this ordinance, the first thing they're gonna do is gonna be to attempt to contact you, explain what the situation is and work with you to get it resolved. For additional information, please feel free to contact us at any time. My, once again, my name is Joseph Molise. I'm the Director of Planning and Development. You can also reach out to Ms. Courtney Paris, our Senior Planner, and ultimately Jerry Bark, the Interim, Interim Assistant City Manager, will be in charge of all outreach for this project. Again, the city's website is www.harkerheights.gov. Facebook is Harker Heights, Texas, and Twitter is at Harker Heights, Texas. Thank you very much for your participation. We look forward to hearing from you.